Power BI is a powerful tool for accountancies, um, especially those who have their clients uh, keeping their data in QuickBooks Online. Uh, Power BI allows to automatically extract data from QuickBooks and produce automated management reporting. Uh, this essentially makes your management reporting function inside of your company a lot more scalable. Uh, I want to dedicate this video to how you can produce automated management reporting from QuickBooks Online. So uh, let's get started. First of all, uh, we have a native QuickBooks Online connector uh, inside of um, Power BI, but it's not the best fit for accountancies. Uh, the main reason is you can only connect to one QuickBooks account at a time. And this is a problem because accountancies often have, uh, you know, 30, 40, some have 100 QuickBooks accounts they need to pull their data from. So, um, um, this connector also has some other issues. Uh, for example, all the data is in 100 different tables and uh, uh, it's just so difficult to find the data you need to um, make your numbers match with QuickBooks. Uh, because of that, um, I will demonstrate an alternative solution to this connector. Uh, I essentially want to demonstrate the QuickBooks Power BI connector uh, in from Vidicorp. So, um, what it does, it pulls data from uh, multiple QuickBooks Online accounts uh, into a Azure SQL database. And this database can then be connected to Power BI, Tableau, uh, Looker Studio. It can be connected to Excel too, um, but I'm not covering Excel uh, for this video. So, um, yeah, essentially, um, it also uh, gives data in this format where we have a, a QuickBooks um, account name. Uh, inside of client ID column. So if you have uh, multiple QuickBooks accounts you put in your data from, um, you will get this column to differentiate between those different accounts. Uh, you also get your data consolidated in tables like PL, balance sheet, cash flow. Uh, so um, yeah, essentially you don't have to browse through a hundred different tables and try to look for data through trial and error um, you know you, you just have those tables that you can pull and all the data that you need to make your numbers match is here so um, now this is obviously a demo data set but um, uh, let me demonstrate uh, through a real world example so uh, if you want to read more about this connector i will leave the link in the description uh, but let's uh, now uh, look into a real world example. So I have access to uh, the QuickBooks connector from Vidicorp. It's already set up for one uh, accountancy that I'm working with. So I just need to uh, sign into SQL Server to pull this data. I'm going to pause this video uh, to not expose the server and database ID for my client as well as the credentials and I will unpause it once I'm connected. I've entered all the details here using server, database name, username and password and now you can see the uh, tables I have available here. So let me uh, take profit and loss as an example. So I'm just going to click on this table and click uh, transform data so I can quickly show you the data format. Essentially here I'm getting the client ID column uh, that uh, shows me all the different QuickBooks accounts that um, we have access to. So for um, accountancies, if you have 30, 40 clients, like they can all be captured. Um, and you'd be able to differentiate between them using this column. You're also getting the accounting method uh, column for accrual or cash. It can be used as a filter for your reports. Now for row type, um, just uh, use the data level. Uh, that's the only one that you need. Um, essentially, uh, 
what this is so you have your subtotals uh, inside of profit and loss so we want to filter them out uh, we only want to keep the individual line items so uh, because of that, I'm keeping data level, which is individual line items, and uh, I'm filtering out all the totals and subtotals. Okay, uh, so uh, the other columns that you have here, now that we got all our data in uh, on the data level, so I will also explain uh, how this data is pulled. Essentially, um, the VideoCorp connector looks through the profit and loss table inside of your QuickBooks. So if you go to QuickBooks reporting profit and loss, um, you will see the data format which mimics this. Uh, so the profit and loss table is pulled on a daily basis and um, we are getting the R date column, which is essentially the reporting date. So uh, we're putting a lot of these data extracts, um, combining them together and uh, uh, returning an R date column, which you can use for filtering by date. And this is done for accounting and cash methods. So <clears throat> yeah, essentially this way, you don't have to reconstruct your profit and loss. Um, if uh, whatever data you see inside of your profit and loss, you will get inside of the VTCorp connector. So uh, that's how it works. Uh, now that we've prepared our data, uh, we can load it uh, into our report. Now that the data is loaded, we can explore it a bit more. Um, essentially, um, in order to build our profit and loss, we just need to do that. You know, uh, just a few button clicks and that's all we have to do. Now, I'm just gonna change the data to the data visual to matrix, and yeah, now we've almost got our profit and loss report just like that. So, um, if we drill uh, one level down, we can see the breakdown for our categories, and um, yeah, um, now let's add a client filter here. Uh, this is the list of clients. Uh, we have about 30 in this data set. So if I just filter to one of those, um, I will see the breakdown for this client. The value column contains the values um, for each of those accounts. So, um, and finally, I'm going to add a filter for, um, for accounting method. Uh, so I can switch between accrual and cash. So just like that, um, I've created my profit and loss report. So um, that's um, obviously very crude, but I believe it demonstrates the uh, concept of um, you know producing a report with a lot of these different uh, accounts grouped together. Now. Um, Something else that uh, you can do, uh, you can create um, uh, role level security on top of this report. Uh, what role level security is going to do, uh, essentially, is um, it's going to uh, show this client only to specific email IDs. So if a person with a wrong uh, um, email ID logs in to um, uh, your report, like they will not be able to see the data for this specific client. And um, we can also design it in a way that uh, people from uh, company one will see the data from company one only, people from company two will see data from company two only, um, etc. Uh, so this way you will have one report which is shared between uh, all of your clients and uh, uh, it will be automatically um, filtered to the clients that logs in. Now, role level security is quite a complicated uh, topic or it can be. Uh, so I'm going to leave some resources for you to follow uh, in the description of this video. Um, uh, 
uh, now let me do some more work on this report and uh, um, I will speed this up to um, not make you wait and um, I will add some of my comments throughout this time lapse. Now what I'm doing here, I'm basically creating a sorted column, um, that's a sorted column for um, my level 0, so um, I want to put income on top and uh, want all the other categories to follow this order which I set. Um, so now that I've created my sorted column, I'm gonna click OK. Um, I will change the data format to number and uh, load my data back to my report. Now that this column is loaded, I'm going to go to level 0, sort by column and uh, click sort. Now I've got a proper sourcing for my PL table. Now this formula is essentially um, calculating the net income, so we are taking the sum of um, value where um, the level 0 is income or other income, and we are sub subtracting everything that contains the expenses data. So now that my formula is ready, um, and I just need to close the um, Close the bracket, so now this should work. Uh, now that my formula is ready, I can apply it to this graph and see the trend for net income. Going to create another formula, which is going to be a net income divided by a total income for um, net income percentage. So we're essentially dividing the net income by total income. Okay, I am going to add this to this graph and I'll change the graph type to a column and a line. So, as you can see, the net income percentage is a lot higher in 2024. Now we have created the expenses by category chart, and we've also created the um, date filter. So, if uh, the client wants to filter um, to a particular date range, they can do that. Um, we've also um, we have created functionality for people to select expenses and to see the drill down uh, for categories that make up the highest expenses categories. Finally, I've created a visual to show income by categories. So I'm just going to rename it. Um, yeah, so now we can see the actual categories that um, make up the income amount. Um, so, uh, I believe this demonstrates the basic functionality of uh, Power BI and uh, now if I want to switch to a different account, I can simply do that with a filter. So, and that, this is going to show me all the same breakdowns. So, I can switch from one client to another this way. Now, um, uh, I can send this uh, uh, template to anyone upon request. Uh, something I also need to say is uh, we have some additional templates. Uh, uh, these are the templates that I talked about. So they are essentially pre-created um, Power BI reports, which uh, could be installed for um, more clients if needed. So. Um, this is essentially a profit and loss trend um, and uh, a visual table um, and we have a separate tab for a PNL table uh, we just got additional lines for gross profit, net operating income and net income in here um, so we also got the balance sheet report 
hence the uh, balance sheet table. Um, so as you can see, balance sheet does balance out. So uh, the numbers are 100% correct. So <clears throat> um, if you are interested in this particular report, I am going to leave a link in the description where you can read more about it and inquire for it if you want to. Um, so this report also supports uh, switching between different uh, QuickBooks accounts. So uh, for your accountancy, it would cover all of your clients. Um, um, I hope this video was useful and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments.